Identifying and being aware of vulnerabilities is the first step to setting up appropriate controls or um, planning for the worst. So taking a look at some vulnerab vulnerability assessment definitions, the Information Systems Audit and Control Association, or the ISACA, defines vulnerability as the characteristics of IT resources that can be exploited by a threat to cause harm. Uh, the Global Technology Audit Guide, or the GTAG, considers vulnerabilities as weaknesses or exposures in IT assets or processes that may lead to business risk, compliance risk, or security risk. Uh, the whole point is that um, whether it's vulnerability management or risk management, um, what we're trying to do is reduce the probability um, of events that would cause a, you know, a stop in our business, a delay in our business, um, and really increase our risk. We've talked a lot so far um, about, you know, people trying to get our sensitive data and information, you know, through different techniques. But there's also physical uh, things that could be a vulnerability to our business. Uh, so here we've got a list, you know, the physical intrusion. Um, this could be, you know, unauthorized hardware changes. It could be somebody coming into our facility without permission. Uh, natural disasters, and that's something that we always think about, um, but natural disasters really can have an effect on uh, our business. You know, think about Hurricane Katrina, where, you know, New Orleans found a lot of their businesses flooded, and that's, you know, water's not good for different IT equipment. Uh, kind of going along with that excessive heat or humidity, uh, you have to be certain that where your data is being stored, uh, you've got the right type of environment for the different equipment that you have to house that data. Uh, water seepage again, uh, electrical uh, disruptions or blackouts. Uh, this is especially important when you think of a hospital. You know, they have to have some kind of backup plan if they were to lose power. Uh, same with like a business, you know, is there, if you're without power, what is the acceptable amount of time to be without power um, before you enact your backup plan? So all things to think about uh, in a physical IT environment. We also have some examples of vulnerabilities within our information system. You know, here we've got threats. We've talked quite a bit about system intrusion. Um, but you could also have logistical access control failure, um, you know, poor choice of passwords, failure to terminate unused accounts, and also interruption of a system. Do you have poor service level agreements? These are all things that um, your IT department needs to be on top of and managing. And a lot of times, you know, it could affect accounting. So these are all things to be aware of, especially since Accountants do handle a lot of the sensitive data. Now, being that you do handle that sensitive data, uh, you could be a target of social engineering. Um, social engineering is an employee training not providing enough um, information about how uh, you could be socially engineered. You could get phone calls, um, people claiming they need, you know, they're helping you uh, get into maybe an external website and they don't want you to get locked out so they're doing a courtesy call and all they need you know is your current login information that type of thing those should send up red flags um, that would be a social engineering attempt trying to get access that only you have um, so definitely something to be aware of uh, especially in the positions that you're going to be in and again that would be an unintentional disclosure of information um, so, you know, something to keep in mind is that you do have access to sensitive data, uh, and that is something that is your responsibility, um, and your employer will also inform you of that, that you need to keep that confidential. There's intentional destruction of information. So, you know, watch the employee morale. You know, if, if somebody's on their way out, a lot of times they will cut off their access. Uh, inappropriate end user computing. Here we've just got ineffective training as to the proper use of a computer. 
So to get started, um, with the overall framework, you know, there's some first steps that need to be taken. Uh, and these will likely um, be within your IT department, but, you know, accountants a lot of times will get drawn into this process just for their expertise and um, uh, their access to sensitive information. So the first main objection or main objective uh, for vulnerability management uh, is to really prioritize, you know, each firm has a limited amount of resources. So we need to prioritize our main objectives um, when it comes to taking a look at our vulnerabilities. Also, we're going to assign roles and responsibilities for this management. And there's really four main um, quadrants to this pie. And if we want to look at it in that light, um, monitoring, at, which is your maintenance, you're always going to want to have ongoing assessments and be looking at this uh, from the light of continuous improvement. You know, a lot of us know that uh, things in the IT world change very quickly. So this is an active process. Identification. We've got our IT asset inventory, we've got our threats identified, and our vulnerabilities identified. Moving on to remediation, here's your risk response plan, where we're going to have our policy and requirements and our control implementation. And then also we're going to have assessment. So we're going to be um, continuously doing a vulnerability assessment and prioritizing and reprioritizing. And you'll notice that we've kind of got a circular motion here, meaning that it's just ongoing. You know, you don't finish one piece of the pie and then, you know, put it on the shelf. You're constantly circling through this. So here we go with our main components like we saw on our pie on the previous slide. Um, again, first we've got identification. It's a good place to start. We've got to identify those threats uh, and vulnerabilities. We're going to do an assessment on the vulnerabilities and prioritize them. Okay, then we enact our plan and have our policies and requirements set into place. And then we start doing our maintenance, which is an ongoing assessment uh, and this continuous improvement kind of circles us back to, you know, in six months, things have changed. Do we have new threats, new vulnerabilities? Are we going to have a different priority now because our environment has changed? Uh, and because of that, we're going to have to do some new policy and requirements and begin monitoring and assessing that. So you can kind of see how you keep circling um, through these steps on an ongoing basis. Thanks for joining me and taking a look at our vulnerability assessments.